Hi everybody from Notebook Italia, welcome to the video review of the Rico Magic MK802 uh, 4. So let's start with the unboxing and see what we have inside this package. Just a quick look to the box here. We have a few log on the outside which does remind you a few you know technical specs of this device and some software features. So let's open up the, the box. This is our Ricomagic MK802-4. So let's put it aside for a while just to see what we have inside the box here. So here we have this uh, HDMI, you know, uh, cord. We have the uh, just to you know put more easily the uh, mini PC pen into our TV if we don't have enough space. We have of course the power plug which has an output of should have 2 ampere okay here we have the micro USB to USB adapter and of course we have the small quick settings and quick manual nothing really special here so we can put everything aside and see finally our M key 80024 so let's give a look to the uh, outside of this mini PC here we go so starting from the uh, back side we have this uh, fan grill and the hidden here just to be more precise here on the left side we have this small hole where if we just insert a small pin we can reset this device then we have here the micro SD card slot which officially support up to 32 gigabyte we have the first of two micro USB port which is marked as OTGs which means USB on the go we have here the on the back side the other uh, micro USB port which is marked as DC which means that we uh, can you know power up the device via the power plug using this micro USB port and we have a full size USB port which is marked as host which means that this device does support host USB mode on the other side we don't have nothing but a vent grill and of course here we have our, our HDMI output which is 1.4 output which means that we can even output 3D, uh, 3D movie so now let's talk about quickly about the inside of this device we have the rock chip uh, cpu which is the rock chip 3188 it's a cortex a9 architecture it's a quad core cpu clock at 1.6 gigahertz with a production service of 28 nanometers then we have the gpu which is the armani 400 which is a well-known gpu already used in some smartphones like the galaxy s2 or even the galaxy s4 for instance and here into this uh, ricomagic is uh, you know slightly overclock up to 500 gig, uh, megahertz sorry then we have 2 gigabyte of lptdr3 ram and we have 8 gigabyte of internal storage of course, as I told you, we can even expand the internal storage via the micro SD card slot. Then we have, of course, as I already showed you, the uh, USB full sides, two micro USB port, one is OTG capable. Then we have nothing but the HDMI output. Of course, we have Wi Fi inside, we have single band, so it means that it works only on 2.4 gigahertz channels and it's ABGN capable well we have uh, to be honest is uh, a problem here with the Wi-Fi antenna you know there, there are some in interferences here with the Wi-Fi antenna so they are already known even to the Ricomagic which does suggest us to you know take the uh, Wi-Fi antenna out of the uh, mini PC so you should open it and take the antenna out this way we should solve the interferences problem then we have integrated Bluetooth and what else uh, speaking about the Wi-Fi if we use the latest version of the uh, Android 
supported by this Rico Magic, which is version 4.3.2, we can even have Myrica support. So that's all for what concerns the inside of this Rico Magic. Now let's give a look to the software side of this mini PC. So as I told you, we have here nothing but Jelly Bean version 4.2.2. So let's give a look to the about interface here to see the version of this operating system. Okay, we have version as I told you 4.2.2. You can see here that we have the standard as an Android interface. We have the navigation bar with the beside the classical button back, home and multitasking menu. We even have this screenshot, so we can take screenshot. We have this some kind of uh, virtual volume rocker, so we can lower the volume or uh, you know uh, take it up. We have this button to shut down the device. And this is really more interesting when we start the device, so when we start an app or a game or something like this, we can even hide completely the navigation bar, which is really useful. If we press the left mouse button and we perform this web gesture from the lower hand of the screen, we can uh, finally reveal once more the navigation bar. So this is really useful. You just imagine a few, uh, I don't know, maybe games or want to scale to see a full screen movie this could be really really useful so as I told you we have the classical uh, Android interface the stock UI we have uh, folders of course we have shortcuts we have widget we have multi home here as you can see with every home with its own widget we have the app drawer we have the widget tab so this is nothing but the classical Android interface so these are uh, this is for what concerning interface. So if we get directly into the settings, we can see that we have some interesting new menu here. That is for those of you used to see Android on devices like smartphone or tablets. We have this Ethernet menu. In this case, this is really really useful. Let's remind that this device, the Pito 4, has some problem for what concerning the. Uh, Wi-Fi antenna, we have some interferences, so you have two possibilities whether to take out the antenna from the stick chassis or even to use the uh, any you know, USB to Ethernet cable adapter so you can connect directly to the internet using an Ethernet cable. I mean here we maybe have even a third possibility which is the uh, you know um, way of using your device uh, next to your Wi-Fi router. If we get into the more menu here, we have the PPPoE menu, which means that this device can even directly drive a PPPoE device like a modem. If we get into the display, we have settings dealing with font sites and another one dealing with the screen mode. So we have HDMI mode, which means that we can set up the resolution up to 1080p 60Hz and even scale the screen and shrink it or enlarge it according to the monitor or TV that we're using to, uh, you know, make this 8024 work. If we get into the storage menu, we can see that we have 1.97 gigabyte of uh, total internal storage. Uh, you know, the total internal storage is 8 gigabyte, which is divided into internal storage and NAND flash. Yeah, 4.20 gigabyte of NAND flash. If we get into the apps menu here, we see that some apps like Beach Buggy, uh, Beach Buggy Blitz or some other game, for instance like that Trigger, can be moved directly to the SD card and back if we want. So this is this may be really useful considering the fact that we have just two gigabyte of what is considered internal storage. I mean, just to remind you that internal storage is eight gigabyte. This is just the you know, uh, space uh, uh, divided by uh, Ricomagic itself, sorry. So, if we swipe to the running tab here, we can even see and give a look to the internal uh, RAM, which is 2 GB. We have 412 megabyte of RAM used, and we have 1.5 GB of free RAM. So, these are more or less all the most interesting settings for what concerns this device. And you know we have some very few customization made by Lego Magic like this Explorer. 
which is nothing but the uh, file browser or we even have this uh, eOM Media Center which is nothing but uh, together a DNA server and client all together. So these are the most interesting aspects for Vocacell um, Ricomagic customization. As I told you here we have nothing but stock and growing. We have even a very capable CPU which is the Rock Chip 3188 quad core CPU program 1.6 GHz. And this is reflected by the synthetic benchmark. As you can see here, we have the result for concern both on Tutu and Valent. Tutu score 18,022, so a very, very high score for what concerns this chipset. We have the Quadrant benchmark with a result of 5,111, so it's a very, very good score too, considering that we have not the top notch uh, CPU of the moment. So, as we saw in synthetic on benchmark, this rock chip CPU behaves really, really well. But what is the day-to-day -day, you know, uh, performance of this device? We can even analyze this day-to-day this -day performance using games. I mean, nothing but games is, is so heavy to you know, test the device performance. Here we are, all games that can be used by the gamepad. I'm going to use this Xbox 360 gamepad directly connecting via USB cable. Just to show you the power of this rock chip 3188. So we, with games we even have a mixed bag, I mean, because games like this that completely support gamepad has a kind of problem with this Android stick. Because at the beginning of the game you must use touch input. If you try to use the mouse or the gamepad there's no way to go on. And this is really a pity for a game like Shadowgun Dead Zone which is a very very good multiplayer game. As you can see here, though we press the left button, there's no way to go on. Even, you know, pressing the gamepad or the keyboard, no way to go on. This is really pity because if we could go on, there was no problem in using the, the gamepad with this game. So we close Shadowgun Dead Zone and we get directly into the next game next game is the trigger made by the same developers of Shadowgun that's on in this case we don't have any kind of problem for work on set touch input because the game starts directly and we can use the mouse just to uh, you know input what kind of mission we want to start so like this main quest let's press the device and let's press play so as you can see we don't have any kind of problem what is really interesting is that in this kind of game that does support gameplay like this that trigger, we can even customize extremely well the uh, different settings. As you can see the game is very very fast move with nice water drop effect and you know as you can see no problem in using the gamepad. So I was telling you that what is really interesting is that we can even, you know, customize every single button that the action performed by every single button of your gamepad. Okay, so it was just a small test for what concerned that trigger. Let's go on. So I want to show you more games here and you know this is not meant to be uh, a focus on games, but just to show you the performance of this Rock Chip 3188. This is Vector Unit, and this is Beach Buggy Blitz. Vector Unit made very good game with very good graphics, and this one does support gamepad, as the next one I'm going to see in a few seconds. And what is really nice here that we can, you know, set up both the gamepad and the graphics details. And I've already set up the graphic details to the maximum level possible, just let me show you. Here we go. And then we can start the game. Okay. As you see, we have very good water drop effect too here. And the game is perfectly enjoyable, very, very good. 
smooth, fast, good graphic and very very good gamepad control. I mean with a stick like the 8024 and gamepad and games like this, it doesn't really seem to have a small portable console in directly connected to your TV or monitor or whatever, you know. Oops. Okay, this was Beach Buggy Blitz. Now we can go on to the next game, which is really really nice indeed. It's always made by a factory unit. It's a quite a recent game. It's called Riptide GP2. This one too has the possibility to set up both the graphics and the gamepad control. And here the default settings are almost the maximum to the maximum level for this Rock Chip 3188. So although it doesn't have you know the latest GPU actually on the market, it's very very good. I mean the slightly overclocked Armani 400 is very very good performance. So let's go on. So you can see the graphic details is very high. Reflection, transparency is very good. Fast, smooth, no problem. Oops. Okay. Very very good game. Very nice graphics. It's, it's a pleasure to play this game with this device. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's stop here. This was with IGP2. Now the last game of the set that I want to show you is another game that's running very well with gamepad, which is Vitro Tennis. I mean this one can even be oops, what's going on? Can even be completely controlled by the gamepad. No problem. I mean we don't even have to use the mouse to control the game. You will see that we will have another uh, cursor here. This this kind of pink cursor is the one that you control by the gamepad. So let's perform a quick exhibition just to show you the good graphics and how this game is running on this Rock Chip 3188. Okay. point you can see the graphics is very good the game is running perfectly smooth and I mean using the gamepad is like having a very very good small Android console very good job so this is the bit for tennis and that's all for concern games I just just to remind you that I wanted to show you how this device is performing both in synthetic benchmark and in real day life using games. So another thing that's really interesting is uh, the browser. I here we have the stock browser, and I even installed the um, you know the Flash Player. Here I selected Request Desktop Site. So let's scroll a little bit. So you can see the, the scrolling is fast. I mean, you can use uh, a mouse wheel if you want. You can even, if you have a trackpad, double tap like this. I mean, I'm using this device to control the device, which is this uh, keyboard made from Logitech with the trackpad. And I can even perform, you know, double tap to enlarge text like I would do on a tablet or on a smartphone. See here we have the flash player again on request of course and I just need to press and you know 
press play and as you can see there's no problem even reproducing flash content with this Pico Magic 8024 Okay, you can see we can even scroll why the video is running and no problem in even performing a double tap it's perfectly small and fast so it's a very very good CPU even for what concern internet browsing now let's analyze the last aspect of this device which is really interesting is the multimedia side we can of course use a player like a dice player to reproduce any kind of file file sorry as you can see we can even reproduce mkv file up to 1080p as you can see the file is running quite well but we have some micro stuttering here and there this is a known problem with this Wico chip CPU 3188 it's not the problem of the CPU itself but of the uh, codec and of maybe even better of the kernel optimization made by Rockchip for this CPU there's already a solution to this problem you have to install a custom ROM with a custom kernel that will solve this problem I mean the, the developer even you know submitted the uh, this kernel to Rockchip just to you know make this kernel uh, make Rockchip include this kernel into the next SDK 2.0 release so the after all the video is running quite well but we have some stuttering here and there this is really pity you know so this is what concerns video playback of course the best part of the story let's say it's running this device with something like XBMC this is really interesting uh, just few info if you run version 4.1.1 you need to run XBMC version 13 which is nothing but alpha the latest alpha is alpha 7 but if you're running version 4.2.2 you can decide where to run uh, XBMC version 13 or version 12.1 which is the latest stable version what is the problem is that in version 12 we don't have hardware acceleration on Android we will have hardware acceleration on Android with version 13 although uh, as we are still in alpha version in version 13 we still don't have uh, a perfect hardware acceleration so with version 13 this one i'm showing you you can just have hardware acceleration right now in alpha 7 for 720p you have to use version 12 uh, it's a particular version called xaf with this version you can use an external player just to play the video i mean you use the normal xbmc interface and you just the external you know oops just the external version to to play to play the video so this is very very good and it's called XAF version so this is for what concern multimedia and XPMC so just to recap we have a, a very good multimedia device but we have you know to to change some some bad behavior let's say like the one that we have micro starring and the one that it's not a perfect version of XBMC right now running on these Android sticks. So this is everything I wanted to show you about this device so we can now draw a line and you know analyze pro and cons. Of course we have a very good device here with many strong point and weak point. We point one of the worst may say that is the fact that we have some problem with the Wi-Fi antenna I mean it's not dramatic we can open up the device and take out the antenna and the problem is solved of course it would be even better not to you know be forced to open up the device to take out the antenna Bluetooth signal is low too we have the same problem if you give a look to the PCB here we have uh, of course the uh, two antenna the one for wi-fi one for bluetooth and the one for bluetooth has the same problem of the one for wi-fi so you have to take it out 
Then um, we have some, I had at least some difficulties in finding the right controller. I finally could find one, but it was far from easy to be able to, you know, find the right control. And this is really a pity. So I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it's not easy to find the right controller for this Android stick. Some games work, but don't work really well. I mean, we need more games running gamepad and you know running on these devices without the need of uh, you know touch input. And we have some micro stutterings in uh, we have some micro stutterings in video playback, which is really you know really pretty. But we could solve it using, of course. Uh, custom one with a custom kernel. Let's hope that, you know, in the near future, uh, Rockchip will include it into its new SDA, SDK version 2.0. Then we have the Pro. Of course, having this device, it's fantastic. I mean, you have Android directly into your TV, which is really, really great. Although it's even better if you use something like this XBMC, as I told you, to watch movies or whatever else, it's really, really great. So even games, when they work and don't have a problem with, you know, touch input or gamepad, they run extremely well because these devices very, very fast to be, you know, uh, quite a cheap device. So. What else to say? Very good idea, maybe not the perfect implementation for this Android stick, but it's a very, very good idea to have Android on your device. For what concerns the review of this uh, Rico Magic 802.4, that's all. Thanks for watching and bye from Notebook Italia.